Alright, so I'm back here with old Nanny Thunderbird again. The other day I was in here, and my intention was just to make the windows so they went up and down. Service the windows. While I was in there, I realized, you know what, I got some of those ghost shadow lights to go in this thing. I'm like, that'll be cool. So today, we're going to put them in this car. Alright, so last night, I changed the electric motor to the power windows. Got them working again, got the tracks loose. Now, since I'm in here, this will be a really good time to install the ghost shadow lights. I actually found a set that said Thunderbird on them. So I'm going to put them in, and I'm going to take y'all through that. There's a lot of things to consider if you want to put these in. First of all, do you really put, want to put them in? Because it's going to require you drilling a hole in the bottom of your door. Especially if a collector car, that could hurt the value of it. Now this particular Thunderbird, one, the market's still kind of asleep on these cars. I think it's going to take off one day, but I could be wrong. And I think this is really important. This car has been totaled twice. It's got a salvage rebuild title. So this car's been wrecked at least six times. Ain't anybody going to pay any kind of real money for this car. Even if I were to decide to sell it, which chances of that happening are slim to none. So basically, I got a valueless car that I love and I want to customize, so I'm going to do it. Now, this kit gives me a hole saw. I'm not expecting it to be all that great. It, yeah, I'm glad I didn't get my expectations real high. And then you got to figure out where you want it on the door. Now, what I recommend is you pick a place where you're going to have good access. So, pull this down. And there are really only two places I can really stick my hand in right here and right here in the speaker hole. And I think with it up under this part of the door, I don't think it will work out all that well. Up under this part of the door, yeah, I think that's where it belongs. So, figure out where I want this thing. And I can feel there's some like little do lollies and stuff down here. I don't know what they are. The fact of the matter is, they do go through the door, and I should be able to. One. So I could go really on either side of that one. Also, learn a little tip from me. If you are going to do this, then you're going to leave your power window, or even manual window door tracks, which I do recommend. Do that after you install this, because now I'm sticking my hand in grease. So when I do the other side, I'm going to leave the tracks all over here, but I'm going to do it after I install it. Like I said, this little, that little hole saw is a joke, but she should do the trick. Well, let me go grab a drill, and we'll put it in there. I got a hole in the bottom of the door to install the thingamabob and run the wires. Well, this is the whole saw that came with it. So I would think it would be fit. <laughs> uh, I, I would think wrong. It does not. So I'm going to have to get a step bit wall over us out a little bit. Oh, by the way, on this particular kit I got, yeah, we're doing instructions. Yeah, that fits very well. It's flush. I guess for what it is, it looks pretty good. Alright, so down here, that's what it looks like. Just need to make sure we got aimed the right direction. So to do that, I'm going to wire it up and test it. Alright, so now for the fun part of wiring it up. 
first thing I'll show you is one of the clips to go down here in the doors where I decided to port the wire through. I doubt it'll interfere with the clip, but what I'm really trying to keep it from interfering with is the window going up and down. If this wire gets caught in that, it ain't going to be fun to repair it. So the other thing, now, it gives you a pretty good amount of wire. And if this was a four-door car with shorter doors, it would probably do everything I wanted. But this is a two-door car. Right here is the clip that goes to the light that goes right here in the door, which is door activated, so it's where I want to tie into. And it clips in up here. And we are a little short. Now I don't want to stretch it either, so what I'm going to do, and I've thought about this, is I got a little speaker wire here, not very much, but certainly looks like it'd be long enough to do the trick. Let me double check that. Oh yeah. In fact, more than enough to do both sides. So that's a win. I'll go ahead and chop this in two. Snip. Now I need to separate these wires. To do this, I'm using a nice rusty dull knife. Been cutting towards myself. And my tetanus shot has expired. I plan on doing something about that soon. Where they at? Where they at? Where they at? Where they at? Now attach up here, I'm going to use suitcase connectors and hope for the best. Some people swear by these. I have had mixed luck with them, but I looked at all my options and this did appear to be the best one. So, never use these. It's got channel right here where your existing wire goes through. Oh, by the way, make sure your battery's disconnected. Check. And then there's one that's got like a little stopper in there. Take your new one, put it in where the stopper one goes. And for this since it's a light bulb, I really don't think reverse polarity matters. So I'm not even checking to see which one's which. I think this is a better idea than cutting and splicing and all that. Hopefully I won't have to. I got everything seated. Now I take this metal tab and just crush it through here. Now I got some real pliers. Now I got really shoved through the car. And now snap this shut. And repeat the process with the other wire. Now down here well, they don't give you much. I hate wires this small because they're just such a beast to strip. Because it's just so easy to cut too much. I'm sure there's a trick to it. If you have a trick to stripping these ultra thin wires, get down in the comments. I'd love to know. Because these little teeny things like this, these are the bane of my existence. Now normally I'd use a butt connector to put this together, but that wire is so thin. I got some gray nuts. Like these, I just don't know how many grays I got. I got blues coming out my ears. I don't know about grays. Now that's two. That's enough to do this side anyway. I'm gonna wire nut them. Like I said, it's not really how I want to do it. But with these little itty bitty wires, I think it's my best option. I almost feel like those little push connectors you use for telephone wire might be the best of this. I don't have any of them. And just to alleviate the strain on these wires, go put some tape on them. Next thing is I really want to test this. And to do that, I'm going to put this back in because this screws to ground. And so I got that screw in there. That should ground it so I can test this, which is what I want to do now. All right, so I got some good news and some not so good news. Got the battery plugged in, I walked over here, I saw nothing. However, when I put my hand under the door, I can actually see the Thunderbird. So it's working. So, I don't know if y'all can see on this trash can lid or not. But, um, now it's time to line it up. I want to line it up. And it's all actually lined up almost perfect, just like it is. So when I step out, it'd be right th facing me. So I guess that's how I'm, I kind of like that. So 
there's an Allen screw in there. I'm going to get a little Allen wrench and try to get in there and tighten that up. And then from here, it's reassembled the door. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the battery and get that situated just how I like it. Then, honestly, as nasty as that door panel is, I think I'll probably clean it before I put it back on the car. So anyway, I've come around to the passenger side. I've already taken the door panel off. Now, one thing I highly recommend while you got your door panel off is go ahead and loop the tracks for your, even your power windows or your manuals. It'll make your motors last longer. It'll make the when they go up and down easier. I did that on the video for replacing the motor when I did the other side. I'll just show y'all for the sake of showing you on this because it's, it's just one of these good things to do while you're at it. Lots of ways to do this. This is the way I like to do it. I'll take, of all things, hats and grease. I'll slaver it in the track here. But yeah, we're going to put it in the track up top. And I'm doing all this by feel because I can't see it either. Now, the other thing I like to do. I'll take used motor oil and one of these. Yep, that's right, used motor oil. Nothing to scissors assembly. Just oil that down real good. Because now we can see the teeth for this. I wish I knew how to get some oil down on the pivot of that. Sure, that would help some. Alright, so now I got the door good and lubed. Now, it's just basically reassemble the door. Alright, so the other day, I put the lights under the doors. And to say that I'm happy with them is an understatement. So I'm also decided, I'm going to try to put them in the floorboard of the car. Now, the issue comes because these were designed to go in the level-ish bottom of the door. And I have no such thing in the floorboard. I'll have anything... I can attach these things to. So I'm gonna have to scratch bill something. That's all right. I have some things to consider. I want something that's rigid enough to hold this. Uh, I want something that's easy to form or manipulate. And I also gotta remember, God forbid if I crash this car, not like this car hasn't been crashed before, but nonetheless, we're not gonna get into that. Legs fly up and I don't want something that's gonna cut legs. I don't, I mean, it's be bad enough, but don't wanna cause don't want to make things any worse. For that reason, I decided not to use aluminum. I went looking around through some of the scraps I got, and I had some steel and aluminum scraps. I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that. But also, when I do these things, I want to make it accessible to everybody. I don't want to use anything real special. I want something that's easy to come by that anybody can get. And I think I got just the thing. But don't laugh at me. So what material did I choose to scratch build my bracket from five gallon bucket lid you can find these most anywhere good in construction site people probably give them to you they just finished one across the street from me and these are all over the dumpsters so anyway this came off a drywall bucket i believe and it's plastic so it has some give to it but it's pretty firm plastic i mean you put one of these on top of a bucket you can stand on it but that's not osha recommended now I have crawled up under the dash and I measured. I measured from where there was an existing bolt where I could bolt this thing into because I don't want to drill any new ones in there. And where I had some open space because there's a lot of duct work and miscellaneous hoo-hahs up under the dash that um, you have to figure out where your little light motor thingy, whatever, goes up. You gotta have room for it. So I took my measurements. And I came to the conclusion I need one piece of this that is square four inches by four inches, double and four inches by three inches. And to do that, all right, in here I'm going to find where my seven inch mark is, where I'm not going to encounter any of these ridges around in. I guess this is 
where I'm going to put it. Use a straight edge. Sharpie markers right on these things. And I got seven inches, which is perfect. I got seven inches because that's four plus three. And I know I won't go over four inches. There's your two spots for that. Connect the dots. Remember, nobody will ever see this, so it doesn't have to be perfect. If any, I mean, if there was a chance somebody would see it, I'd paint it, but I'm going to leave this red. The first thing is cut it. Now these plastic lids can be cut with snips, knives, variety of different saws. Just whatever you do, be careful. I don't want anybody going to the emergency room because they cut themselves. Because these, these saws can be dangerous. Just be safe. Make sure that you're familiar with whatever you use to cut it and the safety ways to use them. Me? I'm going to be using this Delta Woodworkers bandsaw. I've had this a long time and I think it's the best tool in my arsenal to do this, but I'm not saying it's the best tool, period. So anyway, got my height set right here. These marks, I'm going to go ahead and cut. somewhere but I don't feel like looking for it so I'm just gonna use it into my level. Yep that looks good. Mm -hmm. Good enough. So now I'm gonna me measure four inches and three inches. Now, you've got your mounting brackets. Alright, so up underneath the dash here, I've actually got y'all sitting on the brake pedal. Hoping y'all can see, I hope this turns out, because it's not easy for me to see. But right here there's a screw, this is the one I'm going to take out and hook the bracket to. And I'm just kind of checking to see, first of all, where I need to put my pilot hole. Hopefully moving y'all to my forehead will work better. Alright. So I'm holding it here. I know I got clear of a fuse panel. And right there is where it looks like I need to put my screw hole. Now I feel this empty area here. And that mark right there. Somewhere in the area of this should be where I should put the um, light. Alright, so I tried to GoPro under the dash. And I marked this spot here as a good place for me to put my light. And right here for the screw. So along this line right here, that's my dash. So it's going to go dash, foot pedals in this area. And that's where I got a space where I can put the light. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare this. All right, so I'm just gonna take a quarter inch self-centering bit. Put a hole in here. Now, when I did under the doors, I wasn't real happy with the size of my hole saw. So I found this one in the garage, pretty old. So this is a 25 millimeter or a one inch. I'm just gonna try it on this. The worst case with this stuff, yeah, I've, I've still got pieces of bucket I can use. You know what, I'm going to go stick this in the vise real quick. For safety's sake. Uh, 
Yes, that's far safer. All right, so I've tried the lens or projector or whatever you want to call it in the plastic. And it will work with that one inch bit, the 25 millimeter bit. But I would say that the ideal size really is 24, maybe even 23, 15, 16, something like that. But this will work. Let's put this collar on. All right, now I'll tell you, I've just tried this. If I take the LED off and I look through like this, I can actually see the um, logo. And that will help me preset it in this thing. So it'll be right when I put it in. You remember on the door, I got lucky on one, but not both. It's a, get a camera up here has proven to be quite the challenge. But nonetheless, right here, it's fast as tinks nut, or, or screw, I guess I should say. Get this thing in here. So this is what we got up under here. Yeah, I need, no, I need to put my fuse box cover on. But this right here is the screw holding it. And I'll be completely honest with you, this one was missing. And this was left over from where they gave me a different style to do my window motor. So that's actually one of the old window motor screws. I just put a washer on it. Works great, right threads. And you can see right there is your projector lens. And it's kind of working out because me showing you this with it being red, you can see what I've done. And the rest of that's tucked up under the dash. I think that's going to work pretty good. I need to hook up the wires, but that's going to be a little bit. And, and this is actually me kneeling on the ground. This is much lower than a person would probably ever be looking at it. And there is no signs of that red bucket lid up there. So I'm thinking the bucket lids go work pretty well. All right, so down here up under the dash, the light bulb that does the floor is helping. It's held in by a 932nd screw, so I just dropped it so I could get some length, put some suitcase connectors on it. Got it going to an old piece of speaker wire. And then over here, I'm going to have that one tied in and tie all the lights together. Of course, I do have a battery and hook. Alright, so I got everything wired up with this junction here. Use some wire nuts and you can kind of see the floor, but I'm going to tell you the driver's side really needs to be vacuumed and all. So I'll show you the passenger's floor. And yes, I know that the circle kind of going up on some of the contours and all doesn't quite fit. But heck, it's not designed for this. I just thought it'd be cool. Another thing I will mention is that this car has the issue where the switch that turns off the interior lights, um, one of them somewhere is stuck. I need to fix that. But because it's been like that for a while, the light bulbs have burnt out. So I left the old light bulbs that were burnt out in there just so um, if I have those bulbs working, it'll take away from the effect. You really need darkness for the effect. So I'm going to leave them out and call that my new courtesy lights. All right, so that'll wrap up the Ghost Shadow Light Project on the Thunderbird here. I am really, really satisfied with the whole product. I love it how it shines on the pavement at night. And then how it shines in the floorboards. I do wish I could have gotten them a little better centered in the floorboard, but hey, I gotta work with what's available. They're not made for that. So I just, without doing a bunch of major duct work, it just, I had to work with what I had. So anyway, I hope that helps y'all, maybe give you an idea. Hey, I turned a five gallon bucket lid into something cool. So. And I do it again. I got another set of ghost lights. That I'm not going to give it away just yet, but you know, I got another car that's going to be getting them. And I'll probably just do the floors of that one because I really just don't want to drill the doors, take the door panels off, or anything like that. But nonetheless, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I Y'all do that. I can't thank you enough for it. It really helps the channel out. Uh, it took me a while to understand that, but it does, trust me, so please hit it. And the next episode will be number 50, the 50th episode special. So send in your questions, um, get them into me by October 2nd, October 3rd, somewhere in there. And I'll answer your questions, send them to twolabsgarage at gmail.com. And I can't wait to hear from you all. 
I'll see you again soon. Take care of each other. Take care of your projects. Take care of yourself. And God bless. Have a great evening. Or morning if you're watching me in the morning.